She's an administrative assistant. She writes fiction, poetry, and drama, and enjoys solving crossword puzzles and playing guitar and singing. In this humble director's opinion, her essay is simply the most wonderful way to include the essayist portion of the show. Anna Johnson reading from Bedlam with Love. I have lived with mental illness for well over 20 years now. That's over half my life. Here are, in no particular order, some of my observations about that. First things first, know that if you're mentally ill, you can and will, at least once, sniff out and fall for the craziest person within a country mile. <laughs> or said craziest person will sniff you out. It could go either way. <laughs> Secondly, it is guaranteed that at one point or another, you will hear someone make a staggeringly clueless comment about your particular flavor of mentally interesting. <laughs> this includes, but is not limited to, people calling themselves OCD about something when what they mean is they're meticulous. <laughs> Everyone has mood swings. But everyone gets sad sometimes. <laughs> Thirdly, you also run into people who do not have the letters MD, PhD, RN, or MSW appended to their names, but who claim to be experts on treating mental illness, especially when it comes to medication. They'll tell you medication is evil. The trick is to drink green tea, green juice, raw foods, macrobiotics, regular enemas. I'll stop there, but you get the idea. <laughs> Fourthly, a sense of humor is a requirement, not an optional thing. It's a matter of survival, pure and simple. We laugh that we may not cry. And this humor is darker than the ace of spades in a coal mine. Sometimes this laughter may seem a bit cruel, like when a fellow patient in the Hoo Hoo Hotel decides to run around Starkers. <laughs> but hey, naked people are funny. <laughs> this isn't even detailing our slang, which has a rather wicked edge to it. Ask any one of us, and it's 99% likely that we'll be able to explain terms like B-52 or the ever ubiquitous burrito. Fifthly, if you hang around a psychiatric ward long enough, eavesdropping on the patients, you'll be astonished at the conversations you'll hear. And not just from a train wreck perspective. I mean, you'll be blown away at the intelligence and erudition you'll find. You'll hear people discussing literature, politics, philosophy, art. It's pretty amazing, actually. Sixthly, and lastly, I would like to address the young people out there with mental illness. No one is making videos about it yet, but I want to tell you something. It gets better. No, you won't be cured. No, you can't stop taking your medicine. Yes, you'll have to deal with it for the rest of your life. But the world is ever so gradually changing. Stigma is slowly starting to fade. Celebrities are coming out and discussing their battles with mental illness. I'm no celebrity, but I've made it this far. I'm 35, and I've been living with bipolar disorder since I was 11. I don't wish my condition on anyone. But over the past 20 years, it has indeed gotten better. My advice, read about your condition so you can annoy your therapist as well as your parents. <laughs> Take your medication as directed and don't forget to laugh. Even if the joke is sick, it's okay. If you're laughing, you're on the road to managing your illness. And that's a good thing. Thank you.